You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mike Benyon Rowe and Lee Robertson. And there was a little bit of sweet corn in it. Ooh, that's unusual. Well, hello everybody. Lee, what the flying f is that? What are you talking about? Are you talking that hideous thing over your shoulder? It's a beautiful. Shall I? Shall I? Shall I get it off the shelf? Get it off the shelf. Yeah. Put it in the Just bin. to kind of show people. Oh, beautiful! It is. <laughs> Price. It's from the. It's from the V and A. Um, museum. It's, for, it's from the the Lee Robertson got bored one day. It is, and it's they they've loaned us this beautiful, um, hairless sphinx cat, um, chilling out. It makes no sense. Things don't have to make sense, Mike. They just need everything to, else makes sense. They just they just need to be, and you know that is there. And also, happy Christmas <laughs> and happy birthday. <laughs> this week, I've been elbow deep in Paris Hilton's batter, and I'm bringing you a story about a very hot pair of boobs while Lee is getting arty farty in Crafty Queens. On screen now, you can see our contact info. It's at the Cud TV on social media, where you can follow us, the TV for our website, and on YouTube or a podcast service, look for Chewing the Cud and hit subscribe. And remember, you can message or comment while you're there, just like this lot of lovelies did. Although, please forgive us if it takes a little longer than normal for us to reply to you. Leah's forsworn technology in a favour of a biro and paper. No, old news, Mike. The biro is no more. What happened? It made like that shag you had the other night and ran out. <laughs> so I've replaced it with a more efficient and reliable form of communication. Forsooth, it maketh one write in likeness of a Shakespearean sonnet. Ooh. Let me think. Methinks thou art a snivelling fool of wit and mirth devoid. Of dribble thick and bubbling drool, a feckless anthropoid. Whereas, forsooth, I say this, and all here listen closely, I am the one that makes fools laugh, the one they love mostly. Enough! Put that feather down. Quill. Um, I, I know you will or else. <laughs> Quill. Quill, Mike. It's a quill. Some people just don't be educated like what I is. Anyway, enough tomfoolery. Let's play. Game of the Week. The producer can't be with us today, as he's been practising his golf. He said he likes to get his nine out well on the golf course. He'll use his wood to thwop his balls hard, and although he does like it in the rough, on occasion he prefers to get a hole in the end. This week we're playing Shows Your Draws, and that's a game for Lee. So off you tootle while I explain the rules. You know the way this works by now. Lee has to try and draw the subject on the card. Plucked from our producer's fevered imagination, and I have to try and guess what it is that he's drawing. Are you ready, Lee? I am indeed, Mike. Lovely. Well, crack on then. All right, let me get the lid off. Do you want to know what topic or do you just want me to draw? That would be helpful. Just it is an item of apparel. Clothing. Yes. Why are you saying words weirdly? Now, it's Y fronts. Our producer Y fronts. owns these. It's Y fronts. It is! Come on then, hit me with another. Okay, this is a this is a place. Okay. Ooh. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's a place, not a person. Hello. Hello. Oh, it's big, Mike. Grand Canyon? Yes! Does it remind you of anything? Don't make me go there. The next one mm -hmm. is a sport. Okay, you're going to do real well with this. Mm. So... A... 
case it's people. People in sporting attire. V-necks. Oh, okay. And Go then a little bit of sport. that. And then... <laughs> International banana racing. International banana racing with a stick. It's what? International banana racing. Well, he's stood on bananas. No, he's not stood on bananas. What are they supposed to be? <sighs> if I draw that... Closer up for you. Ice hockey? It is! <sighs> Just because you were pucking with him, it was obvious. Uh, this is a person. Okay. Now you see what, hmm, what era of the person. Madonna. No, I haven't drawn anything. It said an era of a person. There's only one person other than Madonna that doesn't have an era, and that's the Queen. No. Jamiroquai. No. But, mm. Um. um. Grot bags. No. <laughs> no. You're too young to remember grot bags. I know who Grotbags is. Bob Marley. No. You're just being silly now. That looks like a penis. It's a mo what, Mike? <laughs> I've forgotten his name. He comes on chameleons. He does. It's very simple, Mike. Boy George, because he has a problem with pronouns. It is Boy George. I was uh, trying to go for the modern day Boy George, but it didn't... That's just a guy with a blacked out neck. Yeah. This is a song. Okay. Okay. See you later, alligator. No. Never smile like a crocodile. No. It's nothing, it's not, not, not amphibian. So what, are you drawing a, a reptile? Kind of. I think I know what this is, and if it is, I'm going to be offended. Is this Puff the Magic Dragon? It is! Why are you offended, Mike? Because that doesn't look like a dragon. It, it does. It looks like a crocodile with wings. It looks, it's, it, I said I was going to finish it. <laughs> You're going to finish it with what? I was going to finish it by... Putting it in a swamp? A magician's hat? <laughs> and a rabbit? Puff the Magic Dragon. <laughs> okay. Oh, right. Let's, let's, let's do another one, because, yeah, concerns. This is a song. Okay. Okay. Um. I know a song that'll get on your nerves, get on your nerves, get on your nerves. A Whole New World from Aladdin. No. Um, you might have, you might have a big one of these. But that's big. And then you might have a little one, a smaller one. Just staring at me doesn't help. <laughs> so what is this, that Mike? Cool. That's a teapot. Okay. And what's this? Teapot. No, what? It, it's a teapot, but it's a... Teapot. Don't, do you know, don't make me scream because <laughs> we've had people commenting <laughs> on the rage that you get me into. Um, so, I don't know what you're drawing. It can't be my fault. No, you know it. You're just being annoying on purpose. I don't know. So that's a big teapot. Right. And then we have a... Another teapot. It's smaller, Mike. Okay, a small teapot. You said the word before. I said the word before. You said the word that I'm. That, oh. <laughs> it's a children's song. Oh, it's a children's song. I was going for so, about a teapot. Yeah. Bob, Bob, black sheep. That is a sign of death. 
you are going to get. <laughs> no, Mike. <laughs> it's not bar fucking bar fucking bar black sheep with a extra on the end. An extra bar in there as well. It's bar bar black sheep. It's bar, a bar, teapot. Bar. With, you, oh, we've been buzzed. What is it, Lee? I'm a little teapot. Still to come, we have Crafty Queens. But just after the break, we have Lee and the show Biz News. You're watching Chewing the Cud with Lee and Mike. Now let's see what jolly jumbuck he's got in his tucker bag as Lee brings us the showbiz news. <laughs> Random. Australian? Yeah. Okay. Showbiz news, would you like a bit of that? Go on then, just Oof. a little bit. And then give me a little bit more. You've done that before, you've done I that I do it repeatedly, before. repeatedly. Yeah, yeah. I do yeah. it all the time, just because it irritates you. <laughs> Richard Branson's been in space, Mike. Oh, okay. He's been in his space, he's been in his spacecraft. Spacecraft. We've got a picture of his spacecraft. Okay, well, what's his spacecraft called? Um, it's called the Richard Branson spacecraft. <laughs> 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 Richard Branson's spaceship. In, uh, it's called his, it's his it's Virgin Galactic space plane cruiser, magnificent. Okay. Yeah. So he's he's been up there, had a float around. Yeah. Been quite happy. Got his pickle out. <laughs> his sandwich pickle. Okay. Um. He's worn a pride ribbon. In, What's he worn a pride ribbon? Because um he wore it in tribute to the people that died in the Pulse nightclub oh. massacre. So one of his members of staff has knew somebody who died and asked him if right. he would wear it. So he was like, yeah, I will. I've got loads of gay friends. Um, it's really important. So as a mark of respect, I'm going to wear that. So he wore it on his on his little jumpsuit. His little jumpsuit. Little jumpsuit. Yeah. Oh. So he's come back from space Ooh. and he's gone, do you know what I need to do? I need to have a concert in space. Okay. I need to gather all my showbiz friends, Ooh. put them in a spaceship, send them into orbit and get them to do a little bit of a sing-along. Oh, that's dangerous. So he's thinking Elton. He's right. thinking Paul. Okay. We've kind of got, you know, that, that is not an actual image of Elton John in space. Being materialised. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but that's what it could look like. Yeah, it could look like could that. Could possibly look yeah. like that. So he's like thinking that that would be the, the ultimate concert that people would have to watch. So you know why he's picking so like, um, Paul McCartney, Paul McCartney and Alan John because they're old. Because they're old, and because you know space flight is still quite a risky thing. Does he not like take years to get? In? No, it doesn't because he's just been. But he didn't years go in, to get in space. He didn't get in proper space though, did he? He just was in the space between <laughs> <laughs> that bit and that bit. Is in the in between space? He was just a little bit higher than a plane. It was quite a lot higher than a plane. So he's actually outside of the atmosphere. It wasn't in deep but, space. Though. No, but deep space doesn't start as, as far out as you think it does. Okay. So um, he's thinking that, yeah, he could, he could, it's whether they would be up for it. Yeah. I'm kind of thinking, mm, I'd rather see other people in space. Okay. Um, so I'm thinking perhaps what about One Direction? Because they're ready. One Direction. One Direction. They're, yeah. they're ready, Mike. They've got the spacesuits on, look. They're ready to go. I'll th <laughs> Every time I see spacesuits, I'm automatically drawn to the crotch area. But that's nothing new. No, but because they're in bright orange and then black, just around here, just at the crotch, it's black. Okay. And it's like going, ooh. Well, you know, they can wear in. other things, Mike, if you, if you so choose. So we're not going for One Direction. No. What about, what about Katy Perry mm. in space? Is she taking Russell Brand with her? No, she, that's like 20 years ago that she was married to him. She's been with What's-His-Face for like ever. Um, the one that was in Pirates of the Caribbean, not Johnny Depp. Um, the other one. The hot one. Yeah, what's he called? No idea. Got his wang out on the canoe. Do you not remember that? Oh. Naked canoeing? Orlando Bloom. Orlando Bloom, yeah. yeah. So, you know, she could mm. do her E.T. thing that she does, that song. Okay. No. My ultimate, mm -hmm. Kylie. Let's okay. send her to space. Once again. And get her to recreate the WOW video. But once again, these are people with life and career ahead of them. You know, sending them to space, it's a risky, risky thing. Yeah, but he's gone and come back and he's fine. Yeah, but, you know, 100% success rate after one journey is not that great. 
Well, who would you want to see in space, Mike? Who would well, you who would you pay good money to watch floating around in space? Well, based on the way that they've looked after us all in the past sort of like two years and cared for us all, both sort of like emotionally and financially, I'd say um, the government, because once again, it's a very risky and dangerous way to travel. You're bringing politics into my showbiz, Mike. I am, yes. You're asking me who I'd like to, to potentially catapult into space or they die. Let's go on to a new cooking show. Ooh. So Nigella. No, unfortunately. No. It, celebrities, they do like to do a cooking show. They do. This one's been hosted by Paris Hilton. Okay. Mm. So now I just have to do my Paris Hilton impression. That's hard. Uh, she's burning her hand on the hob. Ow, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, oh, that's hard. That's hard. <laughs> yeah, it's called Cooking with Paris. Uh-huh. An original title. Um, and... Six episodes on the Netflix mm -hmm. with her celebrity friends. Okay. She gets them to come in. Hello, hello, how are you? Shall we do a bit of cooking? Get your ups out. Get your ups out. <laughs> so she's had her one of her friends, Demi Lovato. Okay. Been in. Got Demi Lovato here. Demi Lovato seems to be wearing yellow feathers. That's not going to happen. Well, I mean, to be fair, you're going to notice those when they come out in your food. Yeah, she's like got some sort past, of meat in her hand, pasta. meat product in her hand. Well, um, I was going to make a comment there, but I don't think I want to. Um, and then... Kim Kardashian, she's had her in. Mekin Summer, I don't know Mekin really. Summer. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'm tell making. Because ah, that's how they talk. Um, so, before, <laughs> <laughs> so before it was sort of like released, <laughs> yes. they, they did a bit of an interview with her about cooking. And, and so they said to her, what, on your desert island, if you, were, if you were stranded on a desert island, what food would you take, Paris? Mm hmm and she said, a potato. It, well, to be fair. <laughs> because you can do mash. Yeah. You can do French fries. Mm -hmm. You can make potato chips or a baked potato. Okay. You can make a lot of things out of a baked potato. I'm obsessed with McDonald's French fries, so I try and copy those. So on her, you know, desert island, there would be a fat fryer from McDonald's. <laughs> no, I'm more concerned that all of these things are coming out of one potato. It's either a very big potato or very small portions. Just one huge, giant potato. <laughs> yeah, because you said, what are you going to take with you? A potato? A single. Perhaps a single you'd have to potato. grow it first and then... She'd have, to, she'd have to plant it and wait. Yeah, yeah. Then... And that, that takes a good eight weeks. Yeah. 16 even, really. I don't think she's thought it through. I don't think she's thought it through I don't think either. she has actually ever seen a potato. I don't think she's ever cooked a potato. No. Um, then they said to her, name a cooking utensil you can't live without. Dildo. <laughs> Not everybody uses their dildos to cook with, Mike. Some people call it a pestle and mortar. Mm. I call it a dildo. Um, so she's like, there's like so much cute stuff in my kitchen, but I'd say my sparkly Sawaski crystal covered spatula thing. That's going to be a nightmare to get through the dishwash. I don't, again, I don't think she's, she's going to be doing any of that. And then finally they said to her, what's your favourite music to cook to? And she went, um, me. Stars are blind. <laughs> that, um, she, really? <laughs> she did. That once hit that she had. You say hit? It was kind one of song? a hit 20 years ago, something like that, 15 years ago. About three. Was it th no, it wasn't three it must years ago. It's been about ago. three years ago. It, uh, it's at least 10 years ago. No, it was, it was at least, it was about three years because I was I think we, we mis misinterpret how old Paris Hilton is. She's 500 years old. Is she doing a She's share? just been around for a long time. Is she time. doing a share? Yeah. <laughs> she's like, oh my God. So, <laughs> so yeah. one day she's not going to go, that's hot. She's going to go, that's hot. Oh, <laughs> just morph into share. <laughs> so if you, if you fancy watching that, go and check it out on the Netflix. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm. Don't think I will. No, you won't. But you know, it's there should you choose. Should I so okay. wish to in, yeah. in, enjoy myself. Now, quite a nice bit of showbiz news now. Okay. So, Jamie Lee Curtis, the actress, mm -hmm. she has revealed that she will be officiating a trans daughter's wedding. Oh. So, yeah. So, in a recent interview, she's spoken about her daughter, Ruby, mm -hmm. and, and she's talked about how her and her husband, Christopher, so we've, we've got a picture of her and her husband, Christopher. Um, I didn't know Jamie Lee Curtis was married for some... I don't know why, but I didn't... I don't know. Um, so, there's her, her and her husband, mm -hmm. um, and... Um, She's kind of been quite open and said, you know, I had no experience of this before yeah. my daughter. Um, and it's kind of been a massive privilege to watch her go through her journey. Mm -hmm. um, and so her and her daughter and her fiancé will be getting married next year and that she's going to 
officially officiate it because she does she can do that officially officiate it officially officiate it or just officiate it officiate it yeah. um so yeah she's 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 dead excited now her daughter is very very private so there are mm -hmm. there are there are no this is a picture of her other daughter okay um jamie lee adopted both of the children okay um there are pictures of ruby prior to transitioning but i just didn't think that was respectful to no. kind of put no, those pictures up because that's that, not that's, that's not, not who she now. is now no. um right right so, to say. um she's she's kind of like said that she's 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 been an ally for the LGBTQI community for for a long time. Mm. Um, she's she's always spoken up about the LGBTQI community and equality. Mm -hmm. um, what she said is is that she has friends and family that are gay or from the LGBTQI community, but she's never ex she doesn't have that experience herself. Mm -hmm. So she feels that it's it's her responsibility to find out about stuff and find out the information and you know be there yeah be there for them so she's been the definition of an ally it's not just saying that i'm there for you it's understanding as well yeah, and and, I think and, we she, and she's gonna so they adopted ruby in 1995 ruby okay. is a, a computer game editor cool um and then her other daughter is amy mm -hmm. um and she does something in the arts mm -hmm. Oh, art. Mm, the arts. Arts. Yeah. Um, and Jamie mm -hmm. herself is about to reprise her role as Laurie Strode Ooh. in this September coming in Halloween Kills. And that's all for this week's Showbiz News. Oh, thank you for that, Lee. It's always nice to hear about Paris Hilton's baby batter. Um, but coming soon, we have Crafty Queens. But before that, we have Mike with the buzz. <laughs> You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mike and Lee. And now it's time for Mike in the Buzz. No insults. No, Mike. No quips. No, oh, to get your paranoia under control. Just because your paranoia doesn't mean the world is now to get you. But I, I've had a bit of a, a tinkle around the internet this week. Have you? Yes. You left your, left your scent. Your markings. A tinkle. <laughs> anyway, um, to find some fun stories, um, and our first one I've got is about uh, M&S. You pissed into... in there. <laughs> you know, we've had dogging in M&S as a story. We did. Well, no, it wasn't dogging. It's cruising. Cruising. What's the difference between cruising, cottaging and dogging? Is a car involved in one of them? Which one? Dogging. Yeah. So when you squash your face up against the window and go rawr, rawr, rawr. <laughs> But you have to leave the window open just a little crack. Otherwise it steams up. And Well, you don't want to leave your, do your dogging in a, a hot heated car overnight, do you? No. Um, but no, M&S are once again getting into hot bother. With hot bother? Hot bother. Because they, they got into trouble. Well, they're they getting other people into trouble over the name of a cake. The that caterpillar, caterpillar thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so they got in trouble over the naming of a new donut range. Okay. Which they've called the Plain Jane. The Plain Jane? The Plain Jane. Because it is just a donut that's just a plain donut. Okay. Okay. And then um, a couple of people went straight onto their, their social media sites going, it's not fair. They shouldn't be called a Plain Jane. My name's Jane and I'm fabulous. <laughs> Ranting about the name of a donut. Okay. Yeah. Um... What's the connection? Are they implying that all Janes are plain? I'm not. Exclamation mark, exclamation mark. It's like... Plain Jane Superbrain from Neighbours. You won't remember that. Where's that from? About the 1988s. 88s. Oh, I was alive then. Yeah, but we were watching five. telly. Yeah. yeah. Our Neighbours, uh -huh. it was when Kylie was in it, obviously. Oh, yeah. So they introduced this character called Plain Jane Superbrain, who was a, who was a girl that was quite plain, but quite brainy. And they did that thing of what they do in those programs is give them a makeover and then they become really hot. And then they get f***ed. I don't know if that happened. <laughs> All right, this isn't the showbiz news. This is the buzz. This is the internet. These are people called Jane getting upset. Because they're plain. Because they, they've been inferred that they are plain Jane. And one, one, said, one lady called Jane, obviously, yes. um, said, my 23-year-old thought it was hilarious. I think it's disgusting. I can't wait for them to bring out a gammon called Karen. 
gammon called Karen. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so okay. you get all the Karen's going, I'm not a gammon. I do like gammon, though. That's okay. With pineapple. Whoa, 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 whoa. You like something savoury with sweet, which is pineapple. Yeah, because that works. So, sorry, you're, you're okay with, with pineapple on meat, mm -hmm. but not pineapple on meat and bread? No. Weirdo. <laughs> What's with the hypocrites? <laughs> Whatever. Hypocrisy. So what, they do, what, are these, what are these miserable old trouts going on about? Are they, are they, they happy? They're basically, they're, they're, the donut's called the plain Jane, and they're called Jane, and they're not plain. Well, if they call them Slim Jims, then all the Jims would be upset. Well, oh, also because that's like copyright. But all the Jims would be like, well, that's not fair because I'm a fat guy. No! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was about to go somewhere with Lean Lees, but I won't. Lean Lee, Lean Cuisines. <laughs> lean Cuisines, that's already a thing. Yeah, it's already a thing. It's already a thing. People have, got a, people have got too much time on their hands they to be have upset by a donut. To be upset by the name of a donut. Yeah. In a supermarket. Just don't eat it. Just don't eat, don't eat the whole. Don't eat, don't eat it. No. Leave it. Yeah. Um, we'll move on to the next story then. This one's a little bit nicer. Okay. Okay. And this is about an Alderney couple who have been overwhelmed by support after homophobic abuse. An elderly put an old elderly couple. Alderney. Alderney. L D E R N. From Alderney. From Alderney. The place, not. Yeah. Uh, not I thought you. Was, I thought you. Was, I didn't know whether you were saying elderly. No, Alderney. Alderney. <laughs> Alderney. <laughs> Alderney. Alderney. <laughs> Alderney. So the couple. So we've got Alan Jones and Ditz Priss, okay, who are from Alderney in the Channel Islands. And they received a lot of abuse after a TV appearance, talking about Pride events. Okay. Right? Um, and they're getting lots of online hate and that sort of thing. But they then started to receive actual letters from people all over the world, New Zealand, wow. Australia, the US, saying how supportive they were of them both. Mm. Right? And how brave it was that they came out on TV and they're not responding to the hate and how lovely it was. Oh, that's nice. Which I thought was really nice. Yeah? Um, Mr. Jones said, we're overwhelmed because of the support. It's great. That it's diluted all the hate that they were getting because there's so much more love than they're getting of hate. So were they on like a news programme? Yeah, yeah, just about Pride in the Channel Islands. Right, okay. And they were just getting lots and lots of hate. From people on the island, or just and in general? Where, and oh, well, yeah. people, that's sad people. It's probably yeah. the same people that moan about a donut. Being called Jane. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which I thought was quite lovely, not the donut thing. The no, the fact that they've got lots of positive messages. Love. Yeah, okay. But moving on from a lovely subject, to a, a health and safety gone mad Ooh. moment. Okay, well, not really. Um, and this is about a lady called Esme, okay, who has uh, been horrified when one of her 32 double J breasts has touched the scorching hot grill while, that she was cleaning while at Nando's. But yeah, as she was cleaning the, the, the grill, her rather large breasts came in contact with the, the grill and burnt. And um, yeah. Um, now, if you if you're a lady that has a significant gift, then surely you'd be aware that if you lent over, they mm -hmm. would, you know. Was she? Was she? What was she? Well, she said that the grill was was still hot, and she leaned too far forward when cleaning the back, oh. and burnt one of her, her the side of her boobs as she was leaning over. Right, she said it was the most painful experience she's ever had. I can imagine. Yeah. But I also kind of think it's really your own fault. You should be look you should be being a bit more sensible. Oh. <laughs> being more being, being judgmental or anything. But yeah. uh, I'm sure those kind of places have like really intense training, don't they, about cleaning things and stuff. So you know. Yeah, just be careful there you tits away though. But yeah. But yes, yeah, so she's also applied for a breast reduction on the NHS, and they said no, because it's not actually impacting your health, it was just an accident. Oh, right, so she didn't want one before. Well, she's asked for them before, but she's now saying, look, I'm burning my boobs and stuff when I'm working. <laughs> Sat there with her boobs on fire. Yeah. <laughs> I think I might need one. But remember, you can always interact with us on social media. We are at The Cud TV. Our website is thecud.tv. And on YouTube, we are Chewing The Cud. And now we go to Story of the Week. Now, this is another food-related one. Okay, oh. Now, you look, you like this one. <sighs> Not a lot. Now, I don't have a scooter. I do have a cardo. <sighs> okay, so I've got a... 
Which side would you like? The stony side or the non-stony side? I don't really like either. I Which don't side like would you like? The stony side. Stony please. side. Okay. What I want you to do is give the flesh a little lick, <laughs> right? And tell me what it tastes of. It doesn't taste of anything. You don't think it tastes of anything? It has a slight. That's a slight. <laughs> it's a. I'm not keen. You're not keen on it? No. Okay, well, this is uh, the story that people are actually flipping out over the revelation that avocado tastes exactly like clean penis. <laughs> I must have been sucking <laughs> some dirty ones. <laughs> Do you, uh, if you'd, uh, lick the avocado now and tell me that doesn't taste like a nice clean peen. Come to thinking of it. Yeah, come, come to thinking of it, yeah. <coughs> oh, okay. How, how, <laughs> how, did they, how did they come up with that revelation? Well, because someone went... Someone was eating avocado. <laughs> Do you know what this reminds, what this me, reminds of? me of? A proper clean dick. <laughs> <laughs> so this was because on TikTok, someone had come to the realisation. And shared it, and then people were then joining in, tasting oh, avocado okay. and saying okay. it did or it didn't. Do, what do you think? Um, I mean, because uh, you've had a lot of dick. I have, I've had, well, what I tend to think is that clean peen tastes a lot like avocado. Oh, <laughs> so whenever you've been, you've been like, oh, oh, avocado on avocado? toast. Avocado, oh, I'll have that later. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh. Hello. Okay. So the producer said if you turn it round and lick the other side, it tastes just like a scrotum. But that's the end of the buzz this week. Well, thanks, Mike. I wonder what a dirty <laughs> tastes like. Jeez. But stay tuned, because coming up next, we have Crafty Queens. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. And now we're going to do something with all the poise and grace of a ballerina driving a dump truck. It's Crafty Queens. Welcome back to my crafting emporium. Mike, do you like my special crafty beret? I think you've mispronounced crappy, Nelly. Oh, how rude. Are you ready to get your craft on today, Mike? I am. Do you know what we're going to make today? Another shambles. <laughs> we're going to... With, with the accoutrements that you've got in front of you, we are going uh -huh. to craft together a vase for a flower. Like like this one that you've, you've kindly put next to me here? Yeah, hold it up for everybody to see. Oh, it's beautiful. I can already tell there's a flaw in this design. We're, we're going to use CDs. Because not many people use CDs anymore, mm -hmm. so we're gonna we're gonna recycle them. Oh, okay. Um, I also have to say that we will be using a hot glue gun today, uh -huh. so we must be careful when using the hot glue gun. Yes. Um, don't be tempted to squirt a little bit on the end of your peen just to see if it's really hot, because it is. It is. Yeah. Um, so, Mike, in front of you, you <laughs> have um, a selection of different things. Uh huh. You have some shiny, shiny card. I have some shiny card, yes. That's the first thing that we're going to use. Would, oh. you, would you like to choose what colour would you like? I think you've got a selection. Oh, there. I've got a selection of tasteful card. Mm. Um, I'm going to go for blue. You're going to go for blue? Blue. Okay. I'm not going to go for blue then. Okay. I'm going to go for red. Okay, cool. Kind of a pinky. Right. Pinky so red. this is going to make the um, cylindrical uh -huh. bit of the um, vase. vase. Oh, okay. So what I want you to do is to roll it into a tube. The width of the cylinder needs to be a little bit bigger than the hole in the middle of the CD. Oh, okay. Okay. So, once you've rolled that into a tube, you need to, you need to hot glue gun it. Okay. The edge along. Ooh! I tell you, that's a hot glue gun. 
I'm gonna... <laughs> You've got to be very careful with these things. Okay. Just a bit of... <laughs> I'm frightened of it. Um, just a bit of glue along the edge of the card. I can see smoke coming out of my glue gun. Mm. Smoking. And then... There's an upstate reference for you. Oh, that's, that's, you know, you just want to hold it in place. It is quite hot. Ooh. Ooh. Do you need to make the sexy time noises while you're doing it? <laughs> I'm just, Ooh. oh, it oh. is, isn't it, Mike? It's hot. Oh. Have you managed that? Is I've it... done that, yeah, yeah. Okay. And has it, has it held? It's, it's, it's held in some places. So then what you need to do is put some glue around the rim. Okay. At the top, round the... So I'm putting something around the rim. Just to, because that is going to, that rim... Uh-huh. ...is going to attach... Boop, 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 boop. ...to your CD. Right, okay. Oop, spurted. And then, gluey side, gluey uh -huh. rim bit... Yep. ...goes in the middle... Mm-hmm. Of your CD. And that is going to be like the base of the CD. Okay. Has it worked? Has it worked? Well, it's on. Whoa, very Ooh. good. So now you've got... also have to say, this isn't for putting water in. I, that's what I thought was going to be the, the drawback, because of the hole. Yeah. D you mustn't put water in. It's, yeah. for, it's for artificial flowers. Oh, okay. Okay. So, now, you have in front of you... Now, I've, I've, I've done what all good craft shows do, is they pre-prepare things. They do something ahead of time. Uh-huh. So, um, you need to get some CDs that you don't, you no longer listen to, no longer use. Okay. I don't know. So, like my Fleetwood Mac CD. Fleetwood Mac, E17, that kind of stuff. Kylie Minogue. No, not those. Those are precious. Um, and now you've you've got you're going to demonstrate this. I'm not going to demonstrate it because my hands are are very butch and sore manly. after yeah. after. So you, you ha should have a spare CD. I do have a spare okay. CD. Now to create the little winged things that we're going to be sticking to it, uh -huh. what you need to do is you need to turn it over onto the um, shiny side down on the table. Now, with the bit of card that you discarded, you're going to use that as a ruler. Oh, okay? okay. And you're going to put it on your CD mm -hmm. so that you're drawing a line yeah. down across there, across the width of it. So missing out the... the the, the, the hole. Yeah, underneath the hole. Okay. Right, done. And then do that on the other side. Okay. Okay. Now then, you, do you have a pair of scissors there, Mike? I do have a pair of scissors here. Okay, now you have to be, again, be careful with this because it could shatter, so you need to take it, and we were wearing glasses, so it might be an idea to wear, you know, safety goggles or something like that. So you want me to cut this CD open? Yeah. You, now, trip it. Trick is cut halfway, and then go turn, turn it around, it around yeah. and cut the other way. And don't inhale the powder that comes off it because that's aluminium powder. It's, you don't want to inhale that. No, you don't. No. Bad. Very bad. Very bad. Yeah. Which is why I should be doing this in a ventilated area, like our studio. Right. Done one. Okay. So now you need to do the other side as well. Why you've given me plenty already? Well, no, you just need to show the people at home. Right, people, mind. this is what I've done. Yeah, and cut the other side off, please. Okay. Don't get touchy. Or testy. One or the other. Right. So you've you've, you've managed it. Right there, we go. Well done, you. So what you're going to do is you're going to put a bit of, bit of glue on uh -huh. the um, side that is not shiny. The the Red label side. side. Okay. Yeah. And then glue it together like a sandwich. Glue it like a sandwich. Now, if you're doing this at home, you need to do this eight times. So you need eight CDs. That's like a full collection. Okay, so okay. what you're going to do now is, along the edge of... So take one of your half CDs. Uh-huh. Along the edge. Yep. Put some hot glue. Now you have to be careful with this because it could dribble 
onto your fingers and you don't want it. Okay, so I've... Yeah. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. stick that yeah. at the bottom, like as if you're kind of like making wings on a rocket. Okay. Now you're going to repeat that all the way around. All the way around, okay. And by the magic of television, we will speed that up. <laughs> So yeah, we we have we have created the body of the of the vase. Are you impressed by that, Mike? I'm massively impressed. Massively by this. impressed. So we're going to zhuzh it up a little bit. Oh. Now you'll have you should have a little pile of um, glass nuggets. I do. So what you're going to do is with your golden nuggets. Mm -hmm. Not your golden nuggets, your glass nuggets. Yeah. Little blob of glue in between each wing. Uh-huh. And just glue them on. It's just a little bit of embellishment, Mike. Isn't that what got people in trouble in the financial sector in the 90s? Embellishment, yeah. Oh, that was embezzlement, sorry. Yes. Stick another one there. Okay. Now, you can leave it at that if you want to. Good, thanks. So we're not. Oh. We're going to add more crap to this. So you've got um, you've got some ribbon. You've got some shiny ribbon. Decorate the top with that, Mike. You want to decorate a top with some shiny ribbon? Yeah, make it look pretty. Again, hot glue gun, but be careful. You don't want to burn your sen. <laughs> Did you just say my sen? <laughs> your sen, yeah. I've gone a bit northern. A bit northern. Mm -hmm. They should be saying you've gone a bit camp. <laughs> I'm so excited about oh, doing this. Um, What's with the noises, Lee? So hot. Oh, oh so hot. Oh, thank you. You must be, that, I, you must be like careful. like to get compliments like this. The, 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 the glue can come through the holes in the ribbon and burn you, which is what it's just done to me. You have you have a, a, a beautiful bloom that you can pop in the end of your vase to just show show people how beautiful it is. On the table, Mike, in front of you. It's a peony. No, wrong end, Dilbert. I like that. Well, if you like it that way, that's fine. Okay. And, and <laughs> there you have it. We've made a beautiful vase for next to nothing out of just everyday crap. Look at that. That is, you, you wouldn't be able to buy that in the shops. Really? I wonder why you wouldn't be able to buy this in the shops. Because it's beautiful. Remember people, if you can't get any peen, be a crafty queen. That's almost the end of the show. Remember to join us on our social media at The Could TV. Our website is thecud.tv. And of course, on YouTube and podcasts, just search for Chewing the Cud. Thank you for watching, and we will see you again soon. Bye. Bye. You, you have a go about. <laughs> <laughs>